Hi, so today what we're going to look at is uh, reverse punch. This is a series part two and um, in this video what we're going to look at is more the things that you should do. Uh, the last video we looked at um, some of the most common errors that people make um, when, when trying to execute a reverse punch. So today let's look um, at each of the body parts and uh, some of the things you should be trying to um, do in order to increase your striking power and to basically be able to hit as hard as you can. Um, remembering that a reverse punch or, or any, any striking technique, the old saying um, that you, you hit with your feet, um, this refers to your stance. Um, most important to begin with is your stance. If you're not standing correctly, you're not going to be able to generate power from the ground out. And, and that is a very important, that's why most traditional martial arts start you off with learning how to stand, how to stand horse stance, bow and arrow stance. So what we're going to look at is from the stance, from our feet all the way through to our hands. Um, at all times in your technique uh, you should be applying um, a principle, uh, sung, which is um, to use no more muscular tension than is absolutely necessary to do a given movement. Um, incorrectly translated as relax. Often when people learn Tai Chi Chuan or they learn any, any technique from Bagua, Xing Yi, even the Shaolin arts, the teacher might say to them, relax, I need you to completely relax. Um, you can't completely relax this just to be able to stand up and, and put my arm into a certain position. Certain muscles have to work. Um, we don't really have a word for it, but what the, the, the teachers were trying to explain to you is you're using too much muscular tension to do that given movement. And you see this in any high-level sports athlete, um, or artists is their ability to perform um, a given movement whilst um, being as relaxed as possible. Okay, um, it's energy efficient, but also um, if we look at striking, you're going to move faster and hit harder. Remember, muscles can only do two things: they can only relax and contract. So you shouldn't be tightening up, tightening muscle groups, trying to tighten up and punch. Okay, with your fist, um, it's relaxed. You drive your skeletal structure. Okay, power comes from the bones and the tendons. Okay, um, not by tensing up the, the muscles and anticipating impact. In the second video, we will look at um, uh, actually striking something and um, why you don't want to be anticipating impact and tightening up. So, let's have a look. First of all, your bow stance. Okay, we're going to take the most fundamental um, method of doing a reverse punch to begin with, just stationary. Um, we, want to, we talked about before that you need to make sure that the heel doesn't come up. So you want to press the foot into the ground. Okay? Um, when you push the foot into the ground, um, that will turn your hip. So I press the foot into the ground and I snap my hip forward. So my belly button is facing to the side. I snap my foot into the ground and I turn my waist. Okay? The stronger you can do this, the more power you're going to get. Okay? This is what we call body action. Okay? Um, in all movements, um, kicking and punching, your body should be moving. Okay? Um, now, what I want to do is I don't just want to push the foot into the ground, okay? What I want to do is I want to push the foot into the ground and actually twist it, okay? So when I'm twisting the foot, what it's going to do is create a coiling type power that comes out. So I don't simply just press into the ground. What I do is I twist my foot into the ground, okay? Um, it's the idea, um, people that do Tai Chi, Chen Tai Chi, silk reeling type power, people make it all really confusing. Um, it, it, it's it's really relatively simple, okay? I'm just creating a coiling type power from the ground out, okay? Um, I'm not going to talk about what happens in your abdomen at the moment, it's going to get a little bit complicated, um, but just the, the real basics of it. If I punch from my arm, from my shoulder, or worst case scenario, just from my wrist, from my elbow, Okay, I could say if I took a piece of string and put it here to here, I could say the length of power is so much. Okay, the longer uh, my movement, ha long say the longer my my punch has to travel, the more power it can generate. Okay, so if I only punch from my elbow down, we saw that it, it's short power. I'm shutting; it's not very long. Okay, if I punch from the shoulder, okay, then I'm, my power is even longer. Okay, if I turn my hip. Okay, now I can draw this piece of string up, and if I took it out, it's even longer, so I'm generating more power. If I use my knee, okay, press my knee in, longer. If I push my foot to the ground, I take a piece of string and I bring it up and out to my fist, 
my punch has actually traveled a quite a bit of distance, so it's had time to gather momentum and generate more power. Okay? This would be like if I stood about this close to you and had a brick and said, I'm going to throw it at you. You'd be like, okay. If I took a bit of a step back and went to throw it at you, you'd be, no, 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 no. Why? Because as I've gone a little bit of distance, I know I have enough distance to generate power. Okay? What we don't do in martial arts is pull a hand back like this to try to punch to generate distance. Okay? Um, so, from very short range here, I can actually punch using a great distance because I use my foot as I send it out and my waist. Okay? Now, what happens if I twist the foot into the ground? When I twist the foot into the ground, the power is not, comes in a straight line if I take that same piece of string and wrap it around. Wrap it around. Okay? Round my back, and round my arm, and then I undo it. It becomes very, very long. So my power doesn't just go straight. It coils out. Okay? That's the idea of coiling it out. Now, as you, you have to do a, lot, a few things with your abdomen and breathing, but we're going to get to that. But the fundamentals is I push my foot into the ground. I don't just press it. I twist it into the ground. Okay? As I twist it, okay, what's going to happen next? As I twist my foot into the ground, I snap my waist. Okay? When I snap my waist forward, I close off this gate. I open this gate. At the same time, I press my buttocks forward, okay, so my coccyx presses forward, my anus tightens, okay, so it tightens and I press forward, so you press forward with your, with your dantian, okay, your punch, okay, if we just look at the torso area to begin with, even before we punch, as, as, I, as I twist and I turn in here, your upper body needs to be relaxed, okay, when I punch out, I relax my chest, I relax my pectoral muscles, okay, that means when I punch with my arm, I'm going to punch clear back here, from my scapula. So when it punches out, I relax, okay, my, my chest relaxes, concaves a little bit, okay, drops in, they're sort of called bare shoulders. I don't punch with the chest right up, okay, this is, if you look through history, where that's come from is um, when the art started being done in the military, and they like things in a straight line, okay, this is incorrect, okay, I'm going to punch, push my foot into the ground, twist it, turn my waist, Okay, tighten two bum cheeks, both bum cheeks are going to tighten, my anus tightens, I push my coccyx forward, okay, my body relaxes, my hand comes out, like so, elbow down, along my center line, okay, at the last second, okay, which is very important now, my punch snaps in, okay, I don't turn my body, my hand over like this, to begin with, okay, so it comes out, I'm going to do it in slow movement, all this happens together in what we call is body timing. Okay? At what stage in your movement do you do your technique? Okay? It depends. How long are your legs? How long is your torso? How long is your arm? Okay? What has to happen is everything has to arrive at the same time. Okay? What body timing you use, it depends on your body. Okay? The main thing is when I press the foot into the ground, I twist, I snap my waist, and the punch ends at the same time. Okay? So when I'm in position here, I press, turn, breathe. Now, I haven't talked about the breathing yet, okay? So I've left that out, just the mechanics of it. I push, twist, okay, and strike. Now, when I push, twist, and strike, if I slow this down, I press, twist here. Look at my fist. Last second, okay? Last second, it turns over, okay? What this does is, in the last second, your punch, hit, just before it hits the target, it spins. This is uh, doing a circular knife, and the last second, if you had a graph going up, and I got to its point, and then dropped down, okay, and this was power, and I said to you, at what point do you want to hit your target? This being the highest point, this being the lowest point, I hope everybody would say the highest point, okay? You want to hit a person when you're moving your fastest, okay? When you corkscrew or just snap the joint into place at the last second, what it does, it makes it spike, okay? So it adds a little bit of power to the technique. And then you have, have a massive drop in, in, in power after that. Okay? So what happens is as I'm just about to hit the target here, elbow down, this turns. Okay? Boom. Okay? This hand lands here. My waist lands. Everything lands the same time. My mind arrives the same time. Okay? Everything arrives the same time. Now, let's imagine you've got all this correct. So... You've managed to push your foot into the ground, but not just pushing it, twisting it. You tighten up your buttocks, push your coccyx forward, 
Okay, close the gates off, pressure's coming from the back foot out. Okay, you've relaxed your chest, you've punched from clear back here. This backhand is pulled to the correct position, spine is up straight, ears pushed from shoulders. Okay, you get all mechanics correct. Okay, fist is at correct angle with elbow pointing down. Okay, if you haven't uh, seen my first video, you should. Okay, why this is important. Okay, everything's in position. But you haven't done what we call reverse breathing, okay? It's worthless, okay? Because what happens is you try to generate power out from the ground out, okay? But remember, for every force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. If I strike, but I don't reverse breathe, which I'm going to explain in a second, um, what will happen is you'll lose all your power here in your torso, okay? So what is reverse breathing, okay? Um, some of your schools may have different um, names for it, okay? But it's an old method that unfortunately been, seems to be completely lost, okay? And any martial technique not um, using correct breathing is worthless, okay? The old sayings of, you know, um, no breath, no boxing, okay? If you don't understand correct breathing methods with every technique, um, that technique um, is no different from the average person doing it, okay? Um, it's the breathing that makes a massive difference, okay? And the reverse breathing is super, super important, okay? What this breathing does is connects your lower body to your upper body, okay? If you don't apply this type of breathing, even if you do turn your waist to do everything correct, you've got like a big gap here, okay? So reverse breathing. Regular breathing is what we say when, when we breathe, we breathe in, okay? And when I, when I, when I breathe in, my abdomen rises. When I breathe out, it falls. So most people that do qigong will do this. I breathe in, my abdomen rises. When I breathe out, I fall. We don't breathe from the chest up here. Okay, everything's from here. You're done here. Okay, so when I breathe in, it rises. When I breathe out, it falls. That's very good for health and for, for qigong. Now, if I want to do an explosive, powerful strike, my breathing should match it. Okay, in martial arts, your breathing should always be one of two things. Okay, strong and slow or strong and fast, never weak. You'd never want a weak breath, okay? You see some people do Tai Chi, and they look like they're, you know, kind of away with the fairies, and they're breathing. I can just stand and stand close and listen to their breathing, and their breathing is weak, like a sick person, okay? You never have weak breathing. Your body can be relaxed and strong, okay? Um, relax, strong, and fast. Relax, strong, and slow, okay? Strong. There's always power, energy in your body, okay? So, when I'm doing a reverse punch, okay, reverse breathing, okay, um, what I do is reverse it. When I breathe in, my, obviously my, my chest is relaxed, okay, when I breathe in, my abdomen comes in, when I breathe out, it bloats out, okay? So, it's like a tight, pushes it up, okay? When my, when my abdomen bloats out, okay, what you'll feel, find is you'll, find you'll feel very, very heavy, okay? And what it will do is, is make this whole area solid, okay? It will just like glue it into place, okay? Um, today, I, I think people have misinterpreted this because you get people teaching people to punch and tighten up their abdominal muscles. They punch and they tighten up their abs. Obviously, somewhere they've um, learned from one of their teachers, the old teachers and the old methods, that when the person strikes, the abdomen is like rock, okay? But that's because of bloating out, okay? Never tensing the muscles. Remember, you're trying to expand. You're trying to get your muscles to expand. By tightening them up, they want to contract. Okay, that's good for maybe grappling or wrestling when I'm pulling you in. But when I'm trying to expand out with a kick or a punch, I never tighten my abs. Okay, if I'm tightening my abs or tightening my arm and I'm punching, my arms want to come in. My biceps, if I punch and I tighten up, wants to do this. It relaxes. I actually try to switch off my biceps as much as I can. Okay, switch off the muscles. Okay, so when I punch here, I'm going to push the foot into the ground. Okay, snap the waist into place chest relaxes, I'm going to breathe out, okay? As I breathe out, I'm going to expand my abdomen. Bum hole stays closed, so the coccyx pulls in. Just about all styles have this. Uh, I will give Wing Chun for an example, okay? It starts to form like so, see them tau. One, two, now look at my here, three. You roll this coccyx in, okay? Just about in all styles, somewhere at the start of the form, you roll the coccyx, Okay, it tightens the two buttocks and closes the asshole. Okay, um, the anus is, and all those muscles go deep inside. That allows you to reverse breathe. This is the correct reason for the belt. Okay, most people wear a belt and they wear it up here. Okay, the belt is worn low, below the belly button on the dantian. So when I reverse breathe, I can feel this getting tight around me. Remember where the belt came from. Um, if you look at all Chinese martial arts, 
Um, and even uh, bef before um, Japanese martial arts started wearing a uniform, if you look at old pictures of Okinawa, they all wore sashes. The guys were in shorts, underpants, no top on because it was boiling hot, and they wore a sash around their abdomen. Okay? The reason they were wearing a sash around their abdomen was for the breathing purposes. That when they reverse breathe, they can feel it getting tight. So when they're doing their forms and their fighting applications, they can feel the tightness of the sash around their body, and so they know they're breathing correctly. Unfortunately, most people don't know how to wear a belt today. They wear it too high, or they think the belt is only worn um, as an idea of their level. Okay, it means nothing. Okay, black, blue, who cares? Okay, what, what belt you wear? The main thing is you're wearing it correctly, and it's a tool. Okay, we wear it as a tool for training. Okay, um, and that's why you see in the old days, the old masters would keep pushing it down, and they do, they keep tugging it down, okay, to get it into the right spot, okay. So when I breathe, I can feel with my belt. A lot of people don't know that, okay, um, the, the, wh why you wear a belt or a sash in, in the martial arts anymore. So, I'm going to push my foot into the ground, corkscrewing it, turning, pressing my pelvis forward, relaxing my chest, pulling this hand back, relaxing and breathing out and expanding out. Ah! That's the basics of it, okay, um, next video we'll look at actually striking something, um, I'll, I'll demonstrate um, maybe striking the, the makiwara, maybe hitting a person with it, um, always a bit of fun, um, the, but the idea is it's relaxed, okay, don't tighten up, okay, don't tighten up, relax, it's technique, okay, again the true essence of somebody's punch is to feel it, okay, a lot of people punch and it looks strong, um, like in, in, in our club, you know, somebody comes in and they, they think they can punch straight, you know, most of the seniors say, right, hit me, give me a pop, let me feel, okay, um, and unfortunately, um, nine times out of ten, um, people can't punch to save their life, okay, there's no power in it when they strike the body, okay, and I'm talking people that have done 10, 20 years of martial arts, okay, pack no power at all, okay, um, and what seems like um, a simple reverse punch to us, when they get hit with it, they they hit the ground, okay, and that's just being mindful of the correct technique, okay. Um, your club may have different methods for doing different types of punches. This is just our basic method for reverse punch. Um, I haven't covered every detail, but I think I've covered enough that will um, certainly help you improve your technique. Um, thank you for watching and watching objectively. My goal is to uh, just try to share um, something with the martial arts community. Um, so take from it what you can. If you disagree, then that's no problem. Um, you know, that's what makes things interesting, is that we, we have different types of styles and techniques. Um, but maybe try it out first and, and see before um, you make a judgment. Okay?